Alright, what's following here is kind of an intro to this sand molar. Now, I've shown the, the uh, failed casting attempt for the first gearbox half, and um, you know, you saw that in the shop update. So, I was shooting some, a little bit of sand molar footage today, and uh, as I'm sitting here moving files around, why I discovered about three or four little clips that uh, I'd shot quite a while back when I was working on the gearbox housing and, and uh, laying out the gears and everything. So what you're going to see here is the original sand molar that I built that I tore everything out of it, scrapped most of those parts out and used them for the sand fluffer. And then it shows the original drum I was, I'm using for a housing and, and laying out the gears and the gearbox pattern and all of that stuff. So I thought this was just kind of an intro to to the sand molar stuff. It's it's old footage, but uh, we'll use we're going to call it part one of the sand molar build. Now I've got other stuff that I'm editing, and and um, I've got some some parts and some materials on the way that I alluded to in the in the next little video you'll see. But uh, this kind of gives you an introduction, and uh, sit back, enjoy the ride. All right, sand molar project today. I've. Uh, been working on it a little bit and I previously built a sand molar I thought I'd show you before I show you it before I got it too far disassembled I've already got the the uh, drum assembly off and it's got the plows and everything on it I'm gonna disassemble that but we're gonna build a new stand for it but the drum is a 29 inch diameter drum that I think is uh, gonna be just about perfect for this setup and it's already a fairly solid drum so we're gonna use it it's got 3 8 plate on the bottom and the, th the drum itself is kind of ragged, but uh, like I say, we've already got it built up, so we're going to use it here. Let me move the camera down so we can see it. Now this is what I had set up for a drum, and it's angled up here. There's about a inch and a quarter shaft, I think, running out the bottom, and there's a bearing there. We've got the bearings in the center. This is a design that I pulled off the internet several years ago, and it's a fairly decent design. I think it would... Uh, works satisfactorily if I do a few little things to it but since we're into it this deep already we're gonna scrap all of this part and uh, what I can salvage off of this for other projects or other parts we're gonna use and the rest of us we're gonna trash out but anyway 29 inch inside diameter drum I think we're about uh, 12 inches tall which is a little bit tall we'll probably cut a couple inches off of it so it's not quite this tall um, the downside to this setup the way I had it set up before was I had a uh, one horse motor on it, three phase motor, didn't have enough oomph to run this. Um, I ran it for a while but it just did not have enough torque and, and not enough power to run it efficiently. Um, like I say it was a one horse three phase motor that I was running off of a phase converter. Uh, had an air clutch on it that I actually liked the idea of the air clutch but there again for that setup why it didn't work well and then we had a right angle gearbox and and it ran into the, the sprocket that's on the bottom um, and it was chain drive didn't have enough torque the plow, plow speed was a little bit too high for it and um, just you know things that I think could be better on it I think the, the Steve Chastain design is a little bit better so that's what we're going to go to now I've already got the center housing machined out and welded up um, the next thing is just to strip this drum out and get all this crap out of here and cut it this is the housing for our uh, the new design, and we'll just set this in here and weld it. The quarter-inch plate that he suggested um, was really probably not necessary on this since we've already got a 3 8 bottom plate. But it's four-inch pipe. I've got the uh, I've got the bearing holders already fitted to it. We've drilled it and, and countersunk them for set screws to lock everything in place, and. Um, the project for the day, like I say, is we're just going to yard out what's on, on this, this drum and we'll probably set this up. And that's all the farther we'll get. How much of it I'll show, I don't really know, but um, you're not going to be missing out on anything that I don't include here. Like I say, we're just going to set it up and start doing, uh, doing a little torch work on it and uh, then we'll go from there. Okay, this is the gearbox components for the Muller project and uh, let me bring you in and show you a little closer what we got here. So this is our main gear that will mount underneath the drum or underneath the tub and this is a 112 tooth size 50 gear. We'll have to build our adapter hub to uh, accept our half inch shaft and we'll lay that stuff out and then our 
16 tooth uh, is the other part of that gearing so those will get mounted now here's our gearbox pattern and I still got to finish it out I've got a, some sanding to do on the inside and these are for our bosses on the back side they have to be sanded out and finished out yet so I've got the flask for this one done I mounted flask hardware and I used my heavier flask hardware that I'm phasing out but uh, the flask for this is big enough that it needed that bigger hardware this is the pattern for our housing and uh, this accepts 35 gears and here's our 112 tooth gear that's going to sit in the middle of there and then here's our smaller gear that will mount here and I have another one of these 16 teeth tooth gears if necessary we're going to use it for an idler someplace here we'll figure out our idler position on it and um, while I'm doing I may modify this to where I've got another little boss about where I think this idler will have to set we'll look at that when we get that far anyway this is the part this is the main layout for the gear housing um, this is five, size 35 tooth gear here or 35 chain Okay, we're out here in the wind, so hopefully it won't be too awful bad. This is a drum that I had set up on the molar before, that I previously had built. And uh, I think I explained I wasn't real happy with it. So anyway, I've got the new center column, or the new spindle housing, welded in place on this. And we'll show it in the middle. This is, or in a minute here, this is the uh, drum that I had set up previously. This is what I had set up for it, a dump door. It was just, uh, just slides in there. I may change that. I may leave it alone. Anyway, that's there. The drum's pretty much standard. We've got a 3 8 base on it, so I built this quite a bit heavier than it needed to be as far as the housing. Now, for my housing, we've got 4-inch pipe, and these are the castings that I had for top and bottom bearing mounts. And we've already got our races mounted inside both of these. And we fitted them. I took, my, took the spindle housing, and it's already been fitted up. Let me move this over. They've already been fitted to it. I've got three set screw holes that are drilled and tapped on the side that are going to lock it in place and um, it's ready to, to go together. Um, so I've got them, like I say, welded in place. I've got the flange welded to the bottom of the bottom of this housing or halfway down the housing and then it's welded onto the base of the molar itself just to give it a little more rigidity and support. But with a 3 8 plate bottom it wasn't really necessary. But anyway, this is where we're at for right now. The next thing will be to fit the, the uh, bearing caps and get them installed and then I have to go ahead and machine the, the main shaft which is 2 inch shaft I've got it there. It's just 2 inch cold roll. It's got to be drilled and tapped on one end and it's going to have to be threaded I believe on the other end and we'll have to set up mounts for the main gear that's going to go underneath with the, the size 50 112 tooth gear. So, that's the progress we're at so far. Probably one of the next things I'll do too is I'll go ahead and get some pipe and make some legs for underneath this. I had it on a stand that was somewhat mobile. You know, I had wheels underneath one end and I'll do the same with this one too. It will add wheels in some way to move it um, at least under one end. So maybe it's when you tilt it back it stands up on its two wheels and you can wheel it around like a wheelbarrow which is basically the way I had it set up before. Um, I want to get some legs underneath it and figure out how, how it's going to be. Height-wise, I want it tall enough to be able to at least get a five-gallon bucket under it. Um, and we may set it up for a wheelbarrow height something or other. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do height-wise on this yet. Um, the sides are a couple, three inches taller than they need to be. I think we're 12 inches tall here, 12 or 14. I think we only need to actually be about 10. Um, so I may trim it down, I may just leave it the way it is, but anyway, I'm going to start working on the mechanics of the, of the plows themselves once we get the spindle done. So, that's kind of where we're at. Hopefully I found something interesting, and uh, follow along. We'll see if we can't get a molar. 